Good afternoon, friends in uh, California and the East Coast, and good evening to the friends in Europe. Also, good morning in Hawaii. Thank you for being here for our solo piano streaming, the music of the great film composer Victor Young, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, there are so many greats, as you know, Ellington, Gershwin, Porter, Kern, Strayhorn. There's something about Victor Young's music that comes directly to the heart. He had a connection to Gypsy Roma music, and uh, he was born in the States, and at the age 10, he was born 1900. In 1910, his mother died. His father, who was a conductor and a musician sent him to Warsaw to live with his aunt and study at the conservatory. He became an outstanding violinist touring with playing with the symphony orchestras in Europe and his life was like a film noir beginning at least. I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. And uh, amazing life and uh, you will find out he came from the prominent Jewish family a lot of culture and amazing I wrote so many film scores historic dramas film noirs westerns everything so um, the first election let's see maybe let me see here uh, I'll do Street of Dreams, and I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. So that was written in 1932. <laughs> Thank you. 
This uh, selection has an interesting history. It was recorded in 1933 by Russ Colombo. And if you don't know who Russ Colombo was, Italian-American singer, had a beautiful natural voice. He was known as the vocal Valentino, nice looking guy, radio. He was ready for Hollywood. And Bing Crosby was at the same time, they were a little different, similar crooner voice. Bing Crosby was closer to jazz. He was influenced by Louis Armstrong. So he had more, let's say, swinging rhythm, but Russ Colombo had a voice that would hit you right in the heart. He was ready to sign a contract with Universal Pictures and engaged to Carol Rombard and unbelievable this is like a you can't believe a tragic thing happened he was visiting a museum there were firearms there museum oh please. he picked up one firearm gun misfired he went to the heart age 26 unbelievable so go to Google and uh, I mean YouTube and check out Street of Dreams. Also he recorded Just Friends in its original slow melody, beautiful melody, Prisoner of Love, Russ Colombo. So the story goes, had he lived, maybe Bing wouldn't have been a major highly profiled singer that he became even though he had great talent of his own. That's the way it is. So let's move on to next tune. Uh, just picking them out here. This one is Weaver of Dreams. This was written in 1951 and I believe Bing Crosby, uh, he, he was first, you know, to record the tune. And it shows Victor Young's versatility. I will play some tunes that had a bluesy feeling and jazz, and some of them, some more moving later harmonies. This is one of those that almost was moving in a bebop harmonic way. Weaver of Dreams, I will give it a light bossa feel.
times uh, recorded by besides Bing Crosby first, Nat King Cole and Kenny Burrell, Freddie Hubbard and they made it, uh, the Jazz Cats made it sound uh, really really hip as you can see those harmonies were really moving in, in the bebop style and here is an interesting historic happening. This tune, next one that Victor Young wrote was 1933. It's called Can't We Talk It Over. It has basically the same main section and the tag as the great Count Basie hit from 38, Blue and Sentimental. Same feeling. So I would musicians feel that Basie was inspired by this tune and Blue and Sentimental had the same opening and ending with a slightly different melody of course and different bridge Victor Young's bridge was different but check check this out closest album of Victor Young songs was done by the great pianist Ellis Larkins in 1957. It's an LP. I happen to have a copy. It has the pictures of two cats 
beautiful cats on a cover. It's called a soft touch, like kitten walking on a case. And when I did a term paper at the SF State where I graduated BA in music, I did a paper on Debussy and the writer, in, when he heard him play in one of the places in Montmartre where he would hang, drink and play, he said as if a cat was walking on a piano. Ellis Larkins, also he plays with a groovy down home feeling. So I'm inspired, of course, by that. So the slow tempos are just, they have a little oomph to them, a little boom. Uh, Ellis Larkins, a uh, great pianist. Um, next, let's do this. Stella by Starlight comes from 1943 or 44. Kind of, uh, I, it's almost a film noir, but uh, it's a film about supernatural. It's a ghost story. Ray Milan, the actor, and Ruth Hussey, who plays his sister, they buy a home on the coast of England, but their friend, the actress, Gail Russell, the role she played, her mother didn't want to leave peacefully. Her ghost is still hanging. So they get rid of it finally, but Ray Milan is the composer in a film and he writes Stella by Starlight. And I'll do it two different ways. The first way, the first chord is diminished. And Miles Davis changed, Bill Evans changed the harmony, so I'll do it two ways. First is uh, more traditional. <laughs> the way Victor Young wrote, wrote it, it's diminished, it's kind of uh, hanging in the air, mysterious. <laughs> you know, the young musicians today hardly ever use a diminished chord. It's considered maybe old-fashioned, they uh, sometimes, or they maybe voice it uh, slightly differently, but that's that Victor Young uses a lot of diminished chords. I uh, will play love letters later. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful chord. And of course, all the traditional, the great bebop bands and the swing, they all use it. 
So here is the, and the original that I played was in key of E flat. That's where it was written. Later the Jazz Cats took it. Some Chet Baker played it in G. Miles and Bill Evans did it in B flat. And I'll do it their version kind of with little different harmonies. Something that you should know about Victor Young, speaking of uh, his early beginning, it's amazing that he's alive. And uh, as I mentioned, he wrote scores for biblical dramas, regular dramas, film noirs, westerns, over 200 scores. And maybe he broke a record, nominated 22 times for an Academy Award. The only time he won was 56, maybe, or 5, around the world in 80 days. A nice tune, but in my estimation doesn't compare to the others in sophistication, but nice melody. So he won for that, but he was nominated for so many. And... Um, when he was in Europe in the early teens, he was playing concerts in London, in different capitals, and he went to play in Russia, in St. Petersburg, and before the revolution, Russian Tsar was in the audience. He was so impressed, he invited him to play at his home. He played at his home, and right after that, the Bolshevik Revolution started, and 
Victor Young was jailed for playing for the Tsar. He escaped after several months and nobody knows how. I've been trying to find out. If you find out, send me an email. He managed to escape. Uh, people have escaped from Nazi concentration camps and as bad as the guards are, you know, they're, they're human. Money talks. They must have, you know, I understand. They got some money. Of course, they have to be quiet. They can't say they let the guy go, but they got paid off. So maybe Victor Young's family or somebody paid off somebody. But thank God he came to America and the rest is, is total history. And so amazing, ama amazing history, Victor Young. Let me see here. As I mentioned, he has connection being in Europe hearing gypsy music and the Jewish music also has that klezmer minor sound. This song is Golden Earrings. It's from a film, 1946 or 47. And Ray Milland and another actor play English commandos. They are looking for secret material to send back to London. So instead of getting captured, Ray Milland gets dressed as a Gypsy Roma and he, Marlene Dietrich is a Gypsy caravan woman and he hides with her as golden earrings. Beautiful, beautiful tune. just hear a gypsy violinist playing that melody. Victor Young even contributed with a song, a most memorable song jazz musicians love to play, Kenny Barron, Bill Evans, Beautiful Love. And where does it come from? It comes from a horror film, 1931, The Mummy, Boris Karloff. Well, it's not a silly kind of horror film. It has a story where it was inspired when they discovered the tomb of Tutankhamen, maybe 1922, the film came out, 31. What it is, it's a fantasy about a mummy who comes back to life. And he sees a beautiful young lady that is 
looks the same way as the princess he was in love with in a previous reincarnation. And they're in love. I don't know about her. I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, in the end, I don't think the mummy is around. But the tune, Beautiful Love, is a haunting tune. Also gypsy-like sound. And that's the theme of the mummy, Beautiful Love. see here one second um, uh, uh, just a second um, also from the late or earlier 40s actually 45 film love letters with Joseph Cotton and Jennifer Jones I don't remember the exact story but there were a lot of letters going and very emotional film and it's also World War Soldier maybe coming home and it's a beautiful theme uh, love letters and if you ever by luck locate that Ellis Larkin's album it's a masterpiece when I spoke with Barry Harris the other day I sent him a copy of this on a CD homemade and he said you know Ellis Larkin's and I did a duet at Town Hall it was probably recorded but 
I would love to hear it. I don't know if anybody has the tapes. Boy, that must have been something. this tune has an uncomplicated beautiful melody with not too complicated chords but they are really harmonically so connected to each other fitting well it was recorded by pop groups in the 50s probably a lot of pop groups I think Pat Boone recorded it and uh, other people be beauty beautiful selection and um, let's see here the film Samson in Delilah, 1949, biblical epic by Cecil B. DeMille, who liked big productions. He had Hedy Lamar and Victor Mature playing those roles that were known in history. And what happened was it was so well done that it was released a year later. It was the highest grossing film in 1950. And here is Victor Young's a little different melody, slight touch of the Middle East sound. Fits really well with bebop, recorded by Max Roach and Clifford Brown. Delilah. Thank you. 
next election a big hit even they even the people who are not too familiar with Victor Young when you mentioned when I fall in love it'll be forever well big hit for Nat King Cole um, it was written in 52 for the film Korean War Air Force One Minute to Zero Robert Mitchum and Al Blythe and Nat King Cole introduced it in 56 also he was in the film called Istanbul I don't know it was intrigue or something Middle East he was the pianist in the lounge so he uh, he played there when I fall in love <laughs>
napkin call, no matter what he did, he put his own stamp on a beautiful, unique voice and had all, always great arrangements. Nelson Riddle, Gordon Jenkins, really beautiful ba background, backgrounds. And um, Victor Young also did orchestrations for Peggy Lee and for other singers, Bing Crosby, more probably, I can't think right now. And he had his own orchestra recorded under his own name. He was a, a total uh, musician and amazing lyrical melodies from the heart. They, they just connected so well and were memorable. You can really, once you hear it, you, you can sing them, you know. And an early tune, I think it uh, even goes way back to 1928, Sweet Sue, Just You, Fast Waller recorded it, uh, Bing Crosby, Mills Brothers, Ella, or Ellis Larkin too, and, um, and let me see, Miles had a recording called Sweet Sue, but it doesn't re uh, resemble this one. I need to hear it a little more from uh, what I heard quickly. It had different harmonies. But uh, Sweet Sue is, is a uh, swinging tune. Victor Young's compositions, a lot of variety. And I'm glad things are opening up. We should be doing some gigs uh, live and slowly it's opening up. Let, let's hope it lasts for a while. I hope it doesn't change when the winter comes and more colds or whatever. 
uh, things happen. But in the meantime, I've been really enjoying streaming at my son's house every other week. Uh, Charlie McCarthy last week, a great freak player. And um, I'll be there on July 10th with one of my favorite Bay Area pianists, Adam Schulman, and we'll do a two piano duet. So in the meantime, anything you can donate, it's a promo or whatever, a sales pitch, but uh, I don't charge for any of these. Some people do, which is fine. Everybody has a different viewpoint, whatever. I'm glad to be doing the music. So any anything you can contribute, uh, it's appreciated. If you can't, tell your friends at least to watch. And you can join my email list and uh, you can find out what's happening. Uh, let's do Mm, another great Victor Young tune, Ghost of a Chance, uh, recorded again by Big Crosby when it came out in 1933 in a short film called Please, and Please is another song, I don't know who wrote that, but uh, Art Tatum, so many people recorded Ghost of a Chance, uh, really a, a beautiful tune.
a slight touch of Thelonious Monk in the end. Monk recorded so many of these tunes in his own way. Great uh, individual trait. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed the program and uh, look forward to seeing you. I'm taking next weekend off, July 4th. So many of you will be with families picnicking and doing stuff. So we're taking that weekend off and we'll see you again Saturday, July 10th at my son's home, Two Pianos, Adam Schulman and myself. Thank you very much. Auf Wiedersehen, au revoir, bye bye.